Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today I want to show you a situation that I had when I was developing a, a database for a, a bookstore. And this bookstore had to enter a large volume of information into the database. This database needed to capture the information either by typing it in by hand or by some other means. Well, when you have a lot of information, you know, a book sells for two or three dollars a lot of times there's just not enough dollars in a sale of that book to be able to cover the cost of spending an you know two or three hours to input that book into the database so i wanted to look for a more cost efficient method in order to get that data into the database well so what i did was i i did some research and found that isbn data databases were fairly prolific out on the web and that the Google database allowed you to capture that data through a command to the database and it would quickly return information to you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and show you the journey that I had in researching the particular API information. So I found in the Google Books data source that they had an API that would allow you to, in their volume database, to get information on a book. That turns out that this API would allow you to grab the information by author, by title, by ISBN data, and retrieve it back to your desktop. In researching further with volumes here, I went and found that using this API meant that I could just send a an HTTP string to their database and return data. Now, let's go see how that works. I'll show you. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and copy a string that I had already I've already staged over here. And if I go to a new tab in my in my browser and paste it in there, what it does is it it goes to the Google API and for books version 1 of volumes and my query is going to be an ISBN string there. So it's an ISBN 13 string. When I hit enter, you'll see that quickly comes back in their books of vo books volumes part. It comes back with the Microsoft Access Bible. And so the Access Bible here was written by these two authors. It was published by Wiley. It was published October 23rd of 2018. And here's the description, a beautiful description that I don't have to type if I can capture that and put it straight into my data. It shows that there's an ISBN 13, an ISBN 10, and a bunch of other information down lower that I probably won't probably won't use so much, but it might be good to use at a later time, but it's it's there and available to me. So what I can see is that I've got an API that I can send data to and I can bring back. Well, how do I then take this information that I have and make it so that I can put it straight in my database? Well, one of the things that I wanted to do is with a Google API, they, they would like you to go ahead and get a, a key, a, an API key that will identify you. And if you identify yourself, you can get as many as 3,000 downloads per day for free. So I can put it in my database and I can retrieve it. Uh, you know, in this case, it's going to be one at a time when I scan a book into the database. And so I'll use a hand scanner and I'll take that hand scanner and scan the ISBN into a field. And that ISBN field then will automatically then go and query this API database. Well, let's see how I was able to accomplish that. Okay. So I want to go ahead and pull up my database here. And in my database, um, I had a form, so I'm going to pull up the main form here. And what this main form did was it allowed me to put the ISBN here in the data table and pull back information. Now, you'll notice that this is the Access 2019 Bible. I'm going to go ahead and delete the two records that I had in here. And I'm going to show you how I actually accomplished that and then show you how it works, okay? So the first thing I needed to do is to um, open up the, um, the Visual Basic area 
and it opened in another window here so let me pull it on over so in my visual basic area the first thing i needed to do before i started writing code is i needed to uh, open up the library uh, or make available the library that has the the coding that allowed me to go to the web and pull data back and so if i go to tools and references I needed to activate Microsoft XML version 6.0. That allows me to go and grab data and pull a data set back to a table, okay? So that has the commands that I need in it. So once I have that established, I can then go ahead and write the code. Now, I already have the code written, so I'll just walk through the code and show you what it does. It's fairly simple. First, I'm going to dimension a variable as a type of XML HTTP 60, which is the DLL library that I just opened up for it. Now, my reader will have various commands that it can perform based on this function that I've enabled in that library. I'm going to define URL as a string, and so I can pass that string to this function. I will dimension a, a database as the current database and a record set within that database as DAO record set. That just allows me to work with my database. And then I'm going to define my URL here as HTTPS, the Google API string that I used just a minute ago to show you that I could pull data back to the screen. And then I'm going to add ISBN now this ISBN is the field that shares my ISBN information with the uh, with this code here, okay? And then I'm gonna say I only want a result of one. This is a command being sent to Google. I only want one record back. As it turns out, there's a 1,700 and some records that would come back in a big long set of text if I didn't restrict it to just the first record. So it gives you the most relevant record first, and then it gives other poten potential hits on down the way. And here's my API key that I'm sending to Google. Okay. Now, reader.open is one of the first commands that this XML HTTP 60 allows you to do. So I'm going to open the command here. I'm going to use the get command within that open command. I'm going to send it the URL, which is this, this string here. Okay, that URL is the string there. And then I, I'm returning false. In other words, stop, stop working after you return it. Then I have reader.send, which is another command. So I've opened the command, I've given it the parameters, and now I'm going to send those parameters. Now I have a little do loop here that I'm going to keep looping through until I actually am able to come back with a ready state, a reader ready state of four, which tells me when it comes back that it has data, okay? That I have now sent out the command and now I have data back coming to me that I can start to parse off and use, okay? So now if the reader status equals 200, in other words, the ready state is four, meaning I got something back from Google. Ready status of 200 means I actually got a text blob. So I'm going to take and take that text blob and I'm going to open my current database. I'm going to open a new record set, which is going to be the table called JSON. And then I'm going to open it as a Dyna set. In other words, I'm going to open it as a table and I'm going to open it for to see the changes then i'm going to say to that record set i want to add a new record that record is going to be input text from my response text from my reader or from xml http 60 i'm going to then update the table with that data and then i'm going to tell the do events tells the operating system to go back to your normal programming. Go ahead and continue working. 
and um, and then it should finish my reader. Now, if for for example, when it gets down here after it's had a ready state of four, yes, I have something. If it gets to two hundred here and set, and basically says, but I don't have anything that's text, it's going to come down here and just give an error message, and it'll pop that on the screen so that I know that 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 book wasn't found or other occurrence happen. I can trap that error code in my database and then return an inf information to the user that says what we tried to retrieve didn't work. Try another book, basically. And then after that, if statement is done, I'm going to refresh the form, that forms.1, um, that forms1 form that I had opened up earlier to show you how I, how I was going to go about things. Now, there's a second piece of information here. You'll notice module one here. Nope, not module one. There it is. There's this command here. It's an on click command. You'll notice I'll show you the button that executes this on click command. And all it does is then send a command over to read JSON, which is our function that I wrote over here, a subroutine that I wrote. And this subroutine then gets a value, which text zero is the field that I'm inputting the ISBN into. And it says, give it the value. So give JSON the value of text zero. And so that comes over here and starts the whole process. Okay. And so now let's take a look at our our form here. So here's the form. I'm going to put the form here in design view for a sec here. Let's go to design view here. Now, if I click on import JSON, what, what you have here under the event is this event procedure. And if you look at this event procedure, like I said, it's this little bit of bit of code that sends the value in text zero to my my subroutine now you'll notice that that's saved under here and this unbound text box if i go look at the name of it that's where text zero comes from so i'm going to put my isbn number in here i'm going to click this button and i'm going to wait for the magic to happen and i should see the magic happen down here so let's close this and let's go back to form view all right, what we want to do now is see how, how this works. So I want to go ahead and put my uh, ISBN number into this field. I have it over in another screen over here copied. So here's my ISBN number. If I click import table ISBN JSON, you see how quick that comes back. It comes back about as quick as the, what the website came back when I uh, just used the website to go straight to Google. And you'll notice that this is the uh, still access 2019 Bible by those two authors. And here's the description has all of this data in it ready to go. I can only go to the next record and this, this record isn't quite long enough to see the entire blob of text, but there it is. I can go ahead and do another one here. I can go ahead and put in a different ISBN number. And so now there's a second record there. And so if I scroll down to that second record, the second record is how is the real business of blockchain, how leaders can add value in the new digital age. So it's from my blockchain class that I also teach. And here's the description of that book and all the information about that book. And I can keep adding more and more volumes. And then I then I would come back behind and I would clean up this data with a set of queries that would look for the uh, the JSON tags in here to find like total items is uh, total items is the number of time number of items that it would have returned had I not told it to just give me just the first one okay so that is how it all works um, later on if I can get another video put together I'll show you how I parsed off all this data and put it actually into the table and was able to do it in just almost a flick of an eye. Generally, what I would do is I would process one record at a time. So when I hit this import JSON button, I would go ahead and get all the data. Then I would immediately go into the next routine, which would 
uh, be a bunch of queries that would parse off the data and put it into the individual records for each book that we added into the database. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you join me again someday. Thank you much. If you enjoyed the content that you saw today and would like to help me grow the channel, hover your mouse over my picture to the left and click on subscribe. There are also other videos showing on the screen that you might enjoy.